Hey everybody, welcome to Intelligent Image. Today I want to tell you about the updates to the Generative AI plugin for Krita. Some significant changes were made with version 1.17. Since then, 1.171 and 1.172 have been released with some minor bug fixes and a few minor changes. I'm using 1.171 for this video. I've put the update instructions and the new setting options at the end of the video. First, I want to look at the new control nets because these are a big deal because they allow you to apply a style to your image while maintaining the same composition so you're not dependent on the style of a certain checkpoint. So if I add a control net here you can see I have now the option for style and composition. So just to demonstrate how these work I have an image here that I like the composition of but I want it to be in more of an anime style more like this one. This one has maybe more of a 3D rendered sort of style or maybe just a generic AI generated sort of style. So I would like to take the anime style from this image and apply it to this one. And in case you're interested, this image was generated using the VPX Turbo checkpoint. And this one was created using the Storebot Gyoza checkpoint. I think I'm saying that right. I'll link both of those in the description below. But the Storebot Gyoza is my go-to anime checkpoint. So what I can do is select my style control net. I have the option here to select the layer that I want it to reference. So I've named the layer that I want to take the style from style layer so I can find it easily there. And now another option that's been added here is if I click the three menu dots here, I have custom controls over my control net, both the strength and the range. Strength is how much control the control net has over your image. So I want that to be pretty high. The range will control at what stage during the image generation process the control net is influencing your image. So right now it is skipping the beginning stages and just starts to apply it a little ways in to the image generation process. I can move this down completely towards the beginning if I wanted to or towards the end, and it really would depend on what you're trying to do. Each one of those would have a different effect based on the control nut that you're using. Because it is mainly the style that I'm trying to have the influence of for this image, I think I might push this a little bit more towards the end of the generation, just in case it does try to take any other elements besides the style from the image that we're referencing. I don't want those to be present early in the generation, so Let's try that. Actually, I might take my strength down here, down a bit, just so we maintain a little bit of our original image here. We don't lose our composition completely. So maybe about 70% there. And let's see what that gives us. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. It's given us much more of an anime style to our image, much more similar to that one. Now try taking the strength up a little bit more. See, maybe if we can get a little bit more of the style in there and maybe increase the range and the strength. Maybe a bit more. Okay, so I'm getting a style I'm pretty happy with. It's definitely much more anime influenced than the original, but we are losing some of the nice details and compositional elements of our original. So to bring those back, we can try adding in an additional control net and using the new composition control net. And for that, I'm going to be using our reference layer, which is this one. And what that will do is take some of the structural elements of that image and mix those with the style elements that we want and hopefully give us a nice mixture of both. So for my values here, I might push the strength up a bit and maybe put the range more towards the beginning and let's see what that gives us. Okay, so this is what it's given us and it's done this before where it's actually referencing the wrong layer. So I do have my reference layer here selected, but it does look like it is referencing the background layer instead. And the way I've been able to fix this before is to duplicate the layer that I want to have it reference and then rename that and select that there. Let's see if that fixed it. All right, that worked. I don't know why it does that or why this fix works, but uh, if you do have that issue, duplicate the layer that you're trying to select in your control net and then rename it. You do have to rename it for some reason, but that's worked um, all the times that this has happened to me before. And then you'll select your new renamed layer here. 
So compared to our previous generation, it does look like we're getting a little bit of the details back in there. Maybe turn this up a bit more and maybe take our strength up a bit. So because my strength is pretty high, we are getting a somewhat different image, but I think what we're getting is a good mix between the two styles. If I were to take this down, the strength, we get something that I think is a very nice mix between the two. So obviously there's a lot you can do with the control nets here, just with the style and composition. These do work best with the SDXL models, uh, not as well with the 1.5 models, but using the BPX Turbo model, I've been able to take this image, which is very much the style that the model tends towards and add more of an anime style to it while still maintaining much of the original structure of the image. All right, so installing the update is easy. You install it just like you installed the plugin originally, going to tools, scripts, import Python plugin from file, select the zip file that you downloaded. It will say that the plugin already exists and do you want to override it? You click yes and it will tell you that the plugin has been imported and that requires a restart. When I click that, create it and restart on its own. So I just closed it and started it again. For the local managed server, it said there was an update required. So click the upgrade button and it downloaded the updates it needed and everything worked fine. So there have also been some changes to the settings in the latest update. So if we go to settings and under styles here, there's now the ability to sort your LORAs by your custom folders. Also, if I add a LORA here, I have the ability to search for LORAs that I have installed. Also here where you can select your sampler. Each sampler now has two parts of its name. The first part is descriptive, such as alternative, creative, fast, real time, etc. The second part is the technical name of the sampler. So that makes it a lot easier to figure out what these different samplers do. You also have the option to edit your custom presets. If I click this link here. It opens in my web browser where I can't actually edit the file, but if you go down here to open settings folder and go into presets, if you open this samplers file with whatever notepad-like program you have, you'll have the option to edit your samplers here. So you can give your sampler a name and the settings that you want to use for it. I tried to do this completely not knowing what I was doing here because um, coding is something I know next to nothing about, even something as simple as this. And I completely broke it, but I gave it to ChatGPT and said, I tried to edit this file and didn't know what I was doing. Can you fix it for me? And it fixed it. And I was able to paste it back in here and have it work. I also asked it if it could add the LMS sampler for me and it knew what I was talking about and it added that for me. So that might be a way to edit files like this. If you're not familiar with the syntax here, the tools to be able to do this sort of thing are becoming available. If you're looking for more information on generative AI for Krita, check out my other videos. Thanks for watching.